Hi guys, it's Amber from Amber Eats Books, and I'm here today to film my weekly reads video. This is the video where I discuss what I read last week, what I'm currently reading, and what I hope to get to during this current week. Just bear with me today, please, because I am in the midst of a cold. I just don't feel well. I am in comfy clothes, and I didn't even put a ton of makeup on today or anything. I just don't feel well. Um, but I wanted to film this weekly reads just because I'm moving on to a new week and it's just become so much of a habit that I just want to get it done today because I don't know if I'll have time to do it tomorrow and then that I'll just push it off towards the end of the week. I really didn't want to skip a week though because I had so many things to say about the few books that I read that I wanted to still talk about them while they were fresh on my mind. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. The first book I'd like to talk about this week is one that I actually DNF'd and that is Orphans of the Carnival by Carol Birch. I was really excited to read this book because obviously it had to do with carnival acts and it seemed to do more with sort of like um, what they called back then like a freak show. It was all about these different um, acts that were either disfigured or had some sort of an anomaly with them. So I was interested in it because I do like carnival stories and I thought it was definitely going to be a character study of this the main character, Julia. She herself is covered in hair. Um, they call her the bear woman, but she's able to sing and dance and so someone sees her um, in South America and decides to invite her to come to the States and to become part of his traveling act. That's about as far as I got. Um, we did get a little further with her. She was being sold to another person. Um, but for some reason, the story just kind of was monotone to me. I just didn't feel like I was getting a connection with this main character. The writing was great. I really enjoyed the writing style. I did think it was beautiful and there were some very um, well-written sentences here and there. But just as far as plot and overall storyline, I just was not getting into it at all. There was also a concurrent storyline of a girl in the 1980s who ends up finding something that belonged to Julia, but I felt like those parts were just um, disjointed. I didn't feel like it flowed well and it felt like a separate book all in its own. Um, so those parts, I only read two or three of them and they just didn't flow. It kind of chopped up the rest of the story and I think that was part of the reason why I felt like I couldn't get into it. So I decided to just DNF it because I had tried for a couple of days and even though I liked the writing, the story just was not enough to keep me interested. So I have too many other books to read. I may try to, um, I may try to another book by this author only because I really did enjoy the writing style. I just don't think this book was for me and I probably would not pick it back up again. The first line in this book was, this is where your lost toys went, the one the dog chewed, the one your mother threw out without asking when you left home, the ones you always wondered about. The next book that I finished this week was actually an audiobook and that was Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I ended up enjoying it. I did not love it, however. I think part of that was because I had listened to, especially Amy Poehler's memoir right before I listened to Tina Fey's, and I just feel like Amy Poehler's Yes Please did it so much better <laughs> than this book. Um, there were some funny moments, but overall I just felt like it was trying just a little too hard in my opinion. Um, once she got sort of into the SNL stuff, it did sort of pick up for me and I was enjoying it more than I was before. Um, but I ultimately only ended up rating it a three, which is enjoyable, but for me was just a little disappointing because I was expecting to rate it around a four when I started it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth a listen. Um, there are things that you learn, especially if you're a fan of Tina Fey. You learn about her and you learn about um, the way, you know, SNL's been put together and her other show, 30 Rock. So it was, there were interesting moments, especially if you are a fan, like I am. I am definitely a fan of hers. Um, I just felt overall compared to <laughs> Amy Poehler's books, which I had just listened to, I think it was two weeks ago, um, I just felt she did it so much better. So if I had not read that, I may have rated this higher, but ultimately I did not. Anyway, I do not have the first line because it is an audiobook. The last book that I finished this week was definitely my favorite, and that was Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. This is a thriller, and what a ride it was. We followed this woman named Mallory. She, we kind of follow, follow two timelines. So we're following her when she first learns about 
um, what is going on in the world and that is people are seeing these creatures or something they're not exactly sure what it is people are seeing um, but when these people see these things they end up going crazy and they become very violent and they start killing people around them and then they ultimately kill themselves um, so we we first meet her she she's learning about this and she ends up finding out that she is pregnant her sister um, has passed away so now she's trying to find some place to go so she's not alone and pregnant in this crazy world people have taken now to wearing blindfolds and everything so now we meet her a couple of years later and um, we kind of see what has happened to her and it kind of goes back and forth between those two storylines so you are you're seeing snippets of the future and then you're kind of going back to the past and seeing how things came to be and it, it just is really fun and very fast paced and I did not get bored at all through this book. I kind of flew through it. I will say the ending was a little um, a little anticlimactic just for me. I think this book is definitely more about the journey than it is about the destination and I absolutely, like I said, loved the journey. I don't know if there's going to be a book two or if this is just a standalone because it was kind of left a little open-ended. I would love if there's a book two because that would answer some more of my questions that I actually had when I finished the book. But if there's not, I'll be okay. I definitely really enjoyed it. I want to go and pick up my own copy because this is a library copy. And I definitely recommend it if you guys are a fan of suspense and thrillers and you just want to keep turning that page. I ended up reading this, I think, four stars. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. The first line in this book is, Mallory stands in the kitchen thinking. So now on to what I'm currently reading, and that is Columbine by Dave Cullen. This is a nonfiction um, account of what happened at Columbine. I just started this yesterday. For it being nonfiction, I'm finding it very easy to get through. I was in high school when this happened. I specifically remember it because I was trying to make sense out of such a senseless act. I felt a little afraid myself going to school. I remember that bomb threats and such started amping up at my school after this happened. Um, so it was definitely something that impacted my life back when it actually took place. But now as an adult, I'm finding it fascinating to go back and to read about the account and to kind of get more into the psychological um, points of why this happened. Not only what happened, but why this happened, how this happened, um, and kind of learn, you know, how things have changed and what we could do better from here on out. So definitely... I can't say enjoying the read. I mean, I guess I am enjoying it because I'm definitely learning a lot of things and I have a morbid curiosity about things. Um, but it's such a brutal subject matter that um, I do find myself feeling very sad at times because of what happened. So I can't wait to go sit down and read this actually. I think I'm going to make myself a nice hot cup of tea and read this after I finish this video and maybe take a nap before I have to go back to work. Now on to what I hope to read for this week. The first book I'm probably going to pick up after Columbine is going to be a middle grade novel and that is Shadow House Book One The Gathering by Dan Poblaki. I just think after the intensity of Columbine I'm going to need something that is just easy and fun and will be quick to get through just as sort of like a palate cleanser for me. Um, so I'm really excited to get to this. Then the next one is going to be actually another nonfiction book which I normally don't do Nonfiction, nonfiction physical books that close together but this one's just been calling me for a while and that is The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery this says an ex a surprising exploration into the wonder of consciousness everyone that has read this has raved about it everyone that is currently reading it that I have talked to is raving about it so I just can't wait to get to it it's just calling my name so I'm just gonna try and pick it up this week and then the last book that I'm going to start, I'm not going to finish, but I'm definitely going to start, is If You Only Knew by Kristen Higgins. This is our May pick for hashtag on the booktube shelf, our book club here on YouTube. I'm going to leave the links to all of the information down below, but I definitely want to read at least up until um, the next update portion. I haven't read any. I kind of skipped it this week. So I want to go ahead and catch up because I'm doing the update the following week. So I'm just going to read probably up to my part. I don't want to go past that because um, I would probably give away spoilers in my video if I did that. So I'm just going to read up to my part um, and I hope you guys are following along. If you are, let me know down below. 
Anyway, those are the books that I read that I'm currently reading and that I hope to read for the coming week. I hope you guys had a great week. If you have read anything that you absolutely loved, let me know. If you've read anything that you absolutely hated, let me know. I just love hearing what you guys are doing, what you're up to. Um, if you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. I post new videos every Monday and then I do post a few others throughout the week here or there, but definitely Mondays I post an update and I'm just here to talk about bookish things and I hope you'll join me. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week and happy reading.